Welcome to the President's Medal Ceremony in honor of Bessie Reese Crenshaw, 1950 graduate of Kutztown University. Today, as we welcome students, yes. Today, as we welcome students back to campus this week for the start of the fall 2022 semester, we take a look back at another student who began that same journey here 76 years ago. I'm Josh Leboff, Acting Vice President of University Relations and Athletics, and I will serve as moderator for today's festivities. Before we begin our program, I would like to recognize several special guests that we have here with us today. First, one of our hosts, the First Lady of Kutztown University, Anne Marie Hayes Hawkinson. Yeah. Representing the President's Cabinet, Dr. Lauren Bazin Arnold, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs. Lauren. Dr. Donovan McCargo, Interim Vice President for Enrollment Management and Student Affairs. <laughs> Mr. Jesus Pena, Esquire, Vice President for Equity Compliance and Liaison for Legal Affairs. <laughs> Mr. Matt Delaney, Vice President for Finance and Facilities. <laughs> Mr. Alex Ojika, Executive Director of the Kusen University Foundation House. <laughs> I'd also like to uh, welcome several members of our Council of Trustees here with, here with us today. The Chairperson, Mr. Robert Grimm, Esquire. <laughs> Mr. Phillips Armstrong and his wife, Annette. Thank you. Dr. Guido Pacchini and his wife, Sue. <laughs> Mr. Evan Santos, Student Trustee. So from the President's Office, Ms. Toya Hayward and Ms. Pamela Reichert-Rex. <laughs> and our Student Government President, Kayla, is here. Kayla Sherry, Student Government President. <laughs> our honoree today is, a, like I said, a 1950 graduate of what was then Kutztown State Teachers College, and now, of course, Kutztown University. Our speakers today will provide perspective and a look at the remarkable accomplishments of our honoree. A true trailblazer, the first African-American graduate of Kutztown University, Ms. Bessie Reese Crenshaw. <laughs> to begin our program, our first speaker has taught at Kutztown since 2017. After graduating from UCLA, she obtained her master's and doctoral degrees from the City University of New York she is committed to strengthening and diversifying teacher education in the College of Education and develops qualitative, qualitative research strands on the life histories of black teachers, as well as socially just ontologies and practices in teacher preparation. Please welcome Dr. Amber Pabon, Associate Professor, Secondary Education at Kutztown University. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon and thank you for the introduction. As a black woman associate professor and director of Emerging Educators of Color and KU's Frederick Douglass Institute director, I stand on the shoulders of giants like Miss Bessie Reese Crenshaw. I'm deeply honored to be in your company and collectively represent some firsts for black women here on KU's campus. I am because we are. I was asked to speak today on black education to reflect on how far we've come. This charge led me to question how we as a society should measure progress in public education. And I wondered, should we examine shifts in public policy from the rural one-room schoolhouse to today's urban community mega high schools? Or evaluate aspects like educator diversity pipelines, teacher training programs, and graduation rates? While these are important factors, I offer that we can also learn important lessons from black women who have historically witnessed, experienced, and persisted as teachers since the naissance of US public education. 
For example, through enslavement, reconstruction, separate but equal doctrine, and Brown v. Board of Education, black women teachers have been advocating for equitable, inclusive access to opportunities to learn. Black women like Susie King Taylor, who, born under slave law in 1848 in Georgia, learned to read illegally as a child and then opened a school in Savannah, Georgia with over 40 students. And still, they rise. We might reflect on the 1920s, 30s, and 40s when black women educators navigated hostile political climates marked by race, gendered, and class oppression with steadfast focus on the mission of educating all of our nation's children. Black Southern born women like Mrs. Vernell Marshall, Miss Elizabeth Sherald, and Mrs. Marguerite Watt, who traveled to Northern cities and HBCUs for teacher education because Southern state public universities continued to utilize segregation laws and prohibited them from attending local institutions. Y'all, they gave them vouchers to leave the state to get teacher education. After acquiring that training though, those teachers returned to the South or taught in Northern schools. We might consider how in schools throughout the 50s and 60s, black women educators remained underpaid, underturred, excuse me, by underpayment, harassment and unlawful termination when segregated schools closed and they were forced to look for employment at integrated schools. Women like my great grandmother, Mrs. Charlie Lee Nelson, who after relocating to California to escape the Jim Crow South, could not secure a teaching position. However, she made lemonade from lemons and became a Sunday school teacher to continue teaching children how to read. And still they rise. The legacy continues to shine through folks like Drs. Valerie Kinlock at the University of Pittsburgh, Dr. Lori Patton Davis at the Ohio State University. They are the first black women deans of those colleges of education. That's remarkable, y'all. And then Miss Chanel Williams, and Miss Dominique Heaton, both alum of Kutztown's secondary ed social studies department, teaching African American history in Philadelphia and Central Dolphin East, respectively. And still they rise, and still they rise, and still they rise. The black women educators I just shared about undoubtedly impacted their communities while also representing firsts in their cities, in states, and in this country. We say their names to honor their contributions to the field. We remember their stories to inform our current approach to tackling ongoing challenges because the struggles of the past can become the lessons we all learn from for the future. We celebrate trailblazers like Miss Bessie Reese Crenshaw in recognition of their enduring commitment to public education that has been integral to the advancement of black folks. I am because we are. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pabone. Also with us today, the illustrious mayor of Kutztown, Mr. Jim Schlegel and his wife, Mary. <laughs> Bessie has several family members here and close friends here with us today. To all of the Crenshaw family members uh, and friends, we welcome you. Please, where are you? <laughs> and a special welcome. A special welcome to her daughters, Frida Crenshaw Mishner, here in the front, and our next speaker, Celeste Crenshaw. Celeste is an Emmy winning, Emmy award winning television producer, scriptwriter, and author, living and working in Washington, D.C. 
She's a recipient of both Addy and Davy Awards and has worked for numerous organizations, including Public Broadcasting, NASA, the White House, NBC, and the National Institute of Health. She created and delivered the very popular film commentary segment, Popcorn and Pig Feet, on black entertainment television, which analyzed the presentation of blacks in film and television. Celeste is a graduate of Temple and Johns Hopkins Universities and recently retired from PBS affiliate WHUT-TV. Please join me in welcoming Celeste Crenshaw. Hi, everybody. Great to be here for this wonderful day. Um, <clears throat> first of all, President Hawkinson and Ms. Hayes Hawkinson and their staff and the Kutztown Foundation staff, thank you so much for your warm welcome and your, your gracious hospitality these last few days. Um, but more importantly, as the old adage goes, thank you for giving my mom her flowers yeah. while she's still with yeah. us. Really appreciate it. <laughs> for that, I am very grateful and much appreciation to any and everyone involved in organizing these last few days, and this has been a beautiful event. Before I talk about how wonderful my mom is, I want to tell you a brief story. <clears throat> I grew up in Raleigh, North Carolina in the mid-50s to late 60s. Interestingly, when mom graduated from Kutztown after all her hard work and dedication, she couldn't get a job in this area. And some of the reasons for that were racially motivated. Eventually, she was offered a job to teach in Wake County, North Carolina at an all-black school in the segregated South, and that is where I was born and grew up until we came north in the late 60s. Now, during this period, my sister and I were some of the first groups of African-American kids, and I lost my place, okay, first group of African-American kids in our area bus to all white schools. This is uh, around 1968. I remember that first day clearly. There were 33 of us sent to a school with a student population of around 1,000, many of whom did not want us there. And some made that quite plain as they lined up to greet us on both sides of the walkway to the school's front door, yelling racial slurs and invectives. But you know what? At least I wasn't alone. I had a posse. And though it wasn't easy, me and my posse yelled back and pushed through together. I wasn't Ruby Bridges, escorted by federal marshals, as she, as she desegregated the all-white William France Elementary School in Louisiana in 1960. And I wasn't Bessie Reese, now Bessie Reese Crenshaw, beginning her college journey as the first black student at Kutztown State. Now, from what mom tells me, her situation was certainly not nearly as volatile as Ruby Bridges' experience, or mine for that matter. But there were certainly slights and comments along the way. And there was the isolation that comes from being the one, the only, the other, the first. But none of that was going to stop her. Education was her passion, teaching her calling. And she was willing to go to any length to achieve that goal. So she endured, not taking part in school social events or participating in other typical college activities, but eyes on the prize, taking classes, studying hard, and working in the evenings in order to pay for this opportunity. And you know what? It paid off. She was a success, is a success. Kutztown helped her live her dream. She inspired students that combined 45 years in North Carolina and the Reading School District. I can't tell you how many times I've been out with mom and we run into a teenager or an adult and they would say, Mrs. Crenshaw, it's so good to see you. You know, you are one of my favorite teachers. <laughs> my mom is my shero. Despite humble beginnings and many challenges, she has built a life to be proud of and I am so proud of her. She's been a stellar example to me and my sister Frida of perseverance, courage, and grace under fire. Mom, thanks for being you and Kutztown University Thanks for honoring this amazing woman. That was wonderful. Thank you, Celeste. On to our presentation. In 2014, the, the President's Medal was created by the President's Office of Kutztown University to be awarded to individuals who bring honor and distinction to our institution and who serve as examples and role models to our students and alumni. 
Past recipients of the medal include William Ribble, class of 1973, longtime member of the KU Foundation Board, KU Pro Football Hall of Fame member Andre Reed, class of 2005, Major League Baseball All-Star and two-time World Series champion Ryan Vogelsong, Gregory Doc Jones, the longtime head coach of the KU men's rugby team, Dr. Carlson Chambliss, long-serving KU professor, philanthropist, and scholar, and most re recently Sandy Green, former mayor of Kutztown, community leader and advocate, and Sandy is here with us today. We're here. There he is. <laughs> now here to present the seventh medal, the seventh president's medal, is our gracious host, the president of Kutztown University, Dr. Kenneth S. Hawkinson. Thank you so much, Josh. And your remarks, Amber and Celeste, were absolutely wonderful. You got me all teared up now. Yes. You see what, you see what you're doing? <laughs> Getting everyone teared up. Well, I'm delighted to welcome you all to this very, very special event. As Josh just said, the President's Medal was created by the President's Office of Kutztown University to be awarded to individuals who bring honor and distinction to our institution and who serve as examples and role models to our students, alumni, and our broader community. And so I will now present the seventh President's Medal to an individual who has made a lasting impact, impact on her community, on Kutztown University, and on thousands of students whom she has inspired throughout her long career. Inspired is how I, how I felt last spring when I saw Ms. Crenshaw's life story displayed on posters in our student union and watched her wonderful interview. You'll see those posters all around you right now. And when I walked in there and saw these uh, things with our presidential ambassador, they're helping uh, guide me through the uh, display. I didn't think twice about it. I came right back to my office and um, and wanted to do this, do this event to honor you. I, I was inspired because despite many challenges and injustices in her life, she persevered and led a model life spent serving others. She greatly honors us by willing, being willing to accept this medal and allow Kutztown University to recognize her incredible courage, resolve, and compassion. So let me tell you all a little bit about Ms. Crenshaw's life and contributions. You heard a little bit before, but let me go through some of the key points. Bessie Reese Crenshaw graduated from Reading High School in 1946 and enrolled in Kutztown State Teachers College that fall. She was the only black student enrolled at that time. In 1950, she became the first African-American to graduate from the institution, earning a BS in education. From the time she was a child, Ms. Crenshaw knew she wanted to be a teacher. To help her fund her studies at Kutztown, she was the proud recipient of the J.F. Goodwin Scholarship, founded in 1936 by a young black physician who wanted to help African-American students realize their potential. Upon graduation, Ms. Crenshaw found that Redding and Berks County were not yet ready to hire an African-American teacher. So she began her career at the Barry O'Kelly School in Method, North Carolina, three miles from Raleigh. She taught a combined third and fourth grade class and later moved on to teach fifth grade. She received her master's degree from North Carolina College at Durham and became a Sigma Gamma Rho sorority member. Ms. Crenshaw returned to Reading in 1969 where she taught third grade for 20 years, they were ready to have her come. And I believe you were the, the first African-American teacher in 1969? At, at Reading? Yeah, at Reading? Yeah, no, I don't think I was the first. There were others. OK. One of the first teachers in Reading. <laughs> <laughs> and taught at 10th and Green Elementary School. Yes. After her retirement, she continued her commitment to education through her support of the Help One Another organization which raises money to buy books for school children and provides funds for college scholarships and textbooks through the Youth of Yesterday program. 
She also volunteered her time with the Literacy Council of Berks County, Campfire Girls, and the Black Heritage Center. Ms. Crenshaw currently resides in Bowie, Maryland, with her adult children living nearby. It is essential that her amazing story be told and remembered and serve as an inspiration to our students and all those in our community. So it is now my honor and privilege as a token of our appreciation for all of your contributions and to acknowledge her incredible courage to recognize Bessie Reese Crenshaw with one of the highest honors of Kutztown University, I present to you the prestigious Kutztown University President's Medal. Bessie, will you come forward? First of all, I want to certainly thank you, the president, Mr. and Mrs. Hawkins. I just can't believe it. We, the flowers, the quotes, the, the wonderful, uplifting remarks. I'll never forget this day. It is certainly most memorable. Unbelievable. Thank you for your amazing staff for this wonderful award and ceremony. And I thank you to the friends and family who have come to help me celebrate this great occasion. When I entered Kutztown more than 70 years ago, I didn't do it to be a maverick or a trailblazer. I did it because I saw education as the key to my future. And I believe it remains so for today's youth, trying to read the writing here. I was willing to go to any lengths to pursue my dream of teaching, even if it meant feeling uncomfortable for a while. And as we are well aware, many of the important things we accomplish in life don't come easy. Who I am and what I've accomplished is the sum total of my experiences, along with the support of friends and family. Attending Kutztown is also part of my legacy. And for that and this award, I am sincerely grateful and I am thankful to all of you. All is well. Mm -hmm. Together we're golden. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So of course I have to say my daughter's again here. Celeste, would you please stand? Okay, just some. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and my my younger daughter Frida, who is a writer, she oh, just finished a, ch a children's book. Uh, and so this is Frida. <laughs> my nephew Michael Reese. Oh. chairperson of our educational fund, a uh, group called Youth of Yesterday, which I was fortunate enough to work with that group. And we raised funds to, uh, to fund the cost of books for students who wish to continue their education. Many of them certainly have attended here at Quizstown. And uh, after I retired and resigned, um, Miss, uh, well, she's married now. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, Sharon <laughs> Davis, she continues. So Sharon, would you please stand? I've not overlooked anybody, so are there any other familiar faces that I have overlooked? I'm looking around here. Diane's here. Diane. Diane. Is Diane here? Diane. Oh, where's Diane? Right here. Diane and Rochelle. Oh, Diane. Stand, Diane and Rochelle. Stand up. And so many people that I have met today. And then Lee, our photographer. Oh, it's and she's a great photographer. Award winning photographer. Mm -hmm. Yes. She did my 90th birthday, mm -hmm. and she makes you look about 20 years younger. So I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I love her. Right. So 
Yeah, she, <laughs> just like, she came with us. You know, we, we all live in the North Carolina, in the Maryland area, and the D.C. area, right? And you see, and I love the flowers. I don't know who gave me those flowers. What are the people who gave me those flowers? Mm -hmm. Hey, that's so nice. Sharon, Sharon, gave me Sharon flowers, and Aunt Liz sent flowers. And Aunt Liz, my, my uh, sister in law, mm -hmm. was unable, yeah. unable to attend, but she did send us some flowers and whatnot. Yes. So mm -hmm. I really am enjoying that. And I'm looking around to see that I overlook anybody. And we certainly appreciate all of the attention. We've we just gotten so much attention. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> Toward, toward the uh, building, toward the grounds and so forth. And it's just so, I just, I just, I felt so impressed to see, oh, I remember some of the, my professors, you know, and I, oh, that was just so wonderful. I'm like, oh, Dr. Lytle, I remember him from English Lit class and so forth, and I see buildings are named after him. <laughs> and sister Rohrbach, I remember her, not Rohrbach, what's her name? Rickenbach? Rickenbach. Rickenbach. You know, I'll keep talking, so let me stop. <laughs> So the picture over there with the tennis uh, racket. So you played tennis. Miss Stern, she t she did try to teach us how to play tennis <laughs> and and field hockey. You know, she loved those two oh, things. Field yeah, oh, field hockey. Yes, she had us doing that, carrying on with that. Yeah, very good. I love I loved all the class. I loved art. I particularly loved the art classes, and I still like art today. So even though I'm retired, I still try to take classes. You know, because you know, just because you're that older, you know, it's not over yet. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to do. And, and, and I just have to say one more thing. I just saw this fabulous play because I love plays and I always love going to the museum and so forth when, and to art and so forth when I was here in Reading growing up. And now that I'm near the Washington area, I get a chance to visit all the wonderful shows and the theaters and so forth. So we just saw a wonderful play which was the story of of uh, Frederick Douglass, <laughs> and that is a beautiful play. I don't know if you haven't seen it, you really, really need to go see it. Maybe it'll come to uh, Washington, D uh, to uh, New York. Yeah, it might, I think it might be headed to Broadway. It's at Arena Stage, but it's closing now, yeah. so, yeah. But it's just a beautiful story of uh, Frederick Douglass, you know, who was an, an abolitionist and a slave, a fighter for freedom, and it's written so almost in like his own words. That has nothing to do with what I'm doing, talking about today. So. <laughs> Does anyone want her to stop? <laughs> well, well, we've got a couple more things that we want to give you. Oh, really? Yeah, and uh, I think we need a picture from Chris here. So sure. let's Can take I do it. Okay. Sure. Let me slip up here because I'm. This is all right. That's a TV producer. Yeah. All right. Ready? All right. Right here. All right, great. All right, there you go. Oh, stay right there. Oh. Okay, well, we've got a. This is a slippery seat here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we um, we noticed last night at dinner that you like wearing scarves. Oh, really? Yes, I do. I wonder and, how you figured that out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very observant. <laughs> That's how I became a president. Um, uh, this is a Kutztown University. Oh, they have scarf. Oh, and so when you go back to all your friends at uh, the, the, the retirement center, maybe you can sh show them that and wear it for us. Oh, yeah. beautiful, oh, thank beautiful. You. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, and you saw the uh, beautiful campus today, and I know you remarked uh, to Tim and others about how it changed. Mm -hmm. And this is a book that, uh, we had uh, done a, a few years ago called Through the Seasons. Through the seasons. And oh. it's just filled with all kinds of beautiful photographs mm -hmm. of Kutztown University. I gave you a little note there. Oh, there and um, the so you could look at all the beautiful pictures. Oh, that's nice. See, they're all through the seasons. And. Fabulous, right. I'll put that back in here. And I thought you might enjoy this. This is a history book um, through pictures that was put together for our sesquicentennial back in 2016 by two of our history students. And I happened to be breezing through it. And guess who I saw in there? Oh. That's you? Oh, yes. <laughs> 
me, right, very good. Isn't that nice with a caption about, about, uh, about your background? Oh, okay. And uh, don't work your finger on this, but this is a, a bookmarker from Kutztown University. Okay, That's thank you so much. Isn't that lovely? All right, we can just keep this stuff together. And we have our mayor here today, and he wanted to give you something from the borough of Kutztown. Oh, all right. Yes. First of all, welcome back to Kutztown. Well, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> and since you're such a great person, we'll declare you a, a citizen. A citizen. Okay. <laughs> all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What we have for you is, is the borough's emblem. Uh, this is on all the borough's stationery and, and the, the vehicles and everything and license plates. It's, it's a picture of a distal fink and a cob of corn. Oh, okay. And it was designed by Kutztown University student back in the 80s. Oh, wow. So wow. here you go. Welcome to Kutztown. Well, thank you. Very good. Very good. Thank you. All right. This is great. Anything else? Oh, well, this is nice. Don't stop. This is great. 